I was gonna be able to read, you know, my English book, Brave New World. You know, I was gonna get that done. I was gonna toss that up to my English teacher, get the essays done, uh, work on the SATs. Oh, you know, I, I'm working towards uni right now, in case you didn't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, this is gonna be easy. Just do, do your SATs, get your marks, work all-nighters. Yeah, that's not gonna be a problem. But then, yeah, you see, out of nowhere, Stephen King's just like, yeah, I'm gonna publish a new book. And so I gotta open up, and I gotta read that right away. So, hello, everybody. It is, and today we're gonna be doing another Stephen King book review. I did, in fact, read the Stephen King book, The Institute. Uh, as soon as it came out. So I was reading this right away and of course it's kind of a little bit long. It's about 500 pages and so because of that I was thinking oh no you know I should be able to read this quickly. No problem. Not. I, this took me like nine days to read because I'm such a slow reader and I got so much else to do. I got so many tests. But you don't care about that. I'm gonna review the book now. So as you can see it is in pristine condition because I keep all of my Stephen King books looking neat. As you can see there's absolutely nothing that how could this happen to me? I made my mistakes, got nowhere to run. The night goes on as I'm fading away. I'm sick of this life, I just want to scream. How could this happen to me? I'm gonna do it. I, nervous. Kajervit Ugala, I'm gonna off myself because I folded the book wrong. No, don't do it! Why are you shooting yourself with a hot glue gun? I couldn't find my gun for this kit. Don't do it! If It Bleeds is confirmed to be the next released Stephen King book. Really? It is Holly Gibney Part 2. What? Okay, maybe not in pristine condition, but it's pretty nice. And can I just say the beginning is kind of tight, it's super tight. It's, it's really interesting because I like the guy that showed up, Tim Jameson. Man, he was kind of interesting. We were going on along with him. He was kind of a cool character, quirky, you know, interesting. We didn't know what was up with him, but it's okay because it was kind of cool, man. He was really interesting. And then, but ding, but doom, we don't have him anymore. Forget Tim Jameson. We got Lukey Boy. And that's kind of the big thing about the book. Everybody's saying that it's kind of a weird switch. You know, we have Tim Jameson at the beginning and then after about 50 pages, we swap over to this kid named Luke. And I thought, okay, cool. We're gonna we're gonna go with him for a little bit and switch back to J Tim and then go back to Luke. No, 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 we don't see Tim for another 500 pages. Which is a slight issue because he's the first person in the book. Nothing happens at the beginning. It was setting him up. It was literally saying, hey, here's the character. This is who he is. Okay, let's go to Luke now. We'll come back a little bit later. Not, they juked us. It's, it's, I'm actually kind of triggered about that. But he's utterly useless being chopped in at the beginning like that. Like, he's, there's nothing that happens. We, we establish his character. Cool. But when he returns, come on, Steven. You can, you can do a little bit better than that. Stick his character in when he returns. We don't need this exposition at the beginning because... It's not exposition, but it feels like it because all we learn about is who he is and that's utterly useless at the time. Talk about who he is when he actually shows up for a reason. As you can see, there are a couple infuriating bits about the book, but overall, I'll just go on and say that it's a pretty good read. It's, it's an odd, in general, pretty good. Where would I put it? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's in the middle of most Stephen King books I've read. It's, it's fine. It's average. Uh, and the reason for that specifically is... Well, the characters, um, which which kind of bring it down a little bit, as well as the middle towards the ending. And that kind of stuff, I'll talk about that later on. And it was kind of a slow start, although a decent start, not a bad one. It's a slow start. But then that's when things kick into place with Lukey Boy, who is fantastic right up at the start. I said characters weren't that good, but man, Lukey Boy, that at least his beginning was really, really good. I'm one of those people that kind of thinks the child prodigies being the main character of stories is kind of like a cop-out. It's like, oh, look, we've got a main character to make sure that he isn't dumb and doesn't fall into dumb problems and actually is able to justify his solutions. We're going to make him a child genius. But in this situation, it was fine. It, t it totally worked out for me. I feel like it really added to his character and it was like the only part of his character. There wasn't much else for that anyway, so if anything, that part of his character, the genius aspect, was interesting. And it was the most interesting thing about him. Uh, as well as his parents, which was really awesome. I really enjoyed that dynamic, which was pretty cool. And I really enjoyed the part where, you know, the story kicks in from, oh, we're just chilling, into, boom, actual plot. And that part, you know what I'm talking about if you read the book, no spoilers. And 
essentially that is the part that really kicks it off. That's really fun. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but then there was a bunch of other stuff where specifically we're talking about. Now, I don't know if I want to like, spoil this, but I feel like it isn't really a spoiler. Skip forward 15 seconds. I believe that's the L button. So click that and then you'll be fine. But the spoiler is just a little spoiler. Uh, telekinetic. He's, te he's telekinetic a little bit. Um, and we know that from the start. It's kind of revealed in his first few chapters, but to me, it feels like a cop-out. That singular thing, which I'm not going to talk about anymore, felt like a little bit of a cop-out. It's like, well, you know, he's a character who has its own thing, but then we're going to be like, oh, he's also... who's read a lot of stuff pertaining to that kind of, you know, power, but... in this situation, I kind of got over it easy because the whole plot kind of revolved around that, and I was like, you know, I'll, I'll, it's cool, it's fine. It's overused, but it's fine. But when that plot does kick off, that part is the best part of the story, in my opinion. And it moves on to the actual plot, which gets really interesting. So it kind of builds up, and I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. It's a really great atmosphere with pretty good characters. Characters itself, you know, Luke, he starts off as a great character because there's only a couple things we know about him. You know, there's just a few things. But then we build on, and then towards the middle, we kind of see there's not too much more to him. There's kind of, he's, he's a genius. That's it. That's kind of, that's all. There's not that much else. Uh, he, he seems okay. He's a fine character at the start because there's not that much we expect to know at the start. But going into the middle and to the end, eh. The other characters, which are side characters, were re relatively one note as well. They were doing their job, which is fine. But Stephen King, man, I expect a lot more from you. You're Stephen flippin' King, boy. You gotta get with it. There were a few characters who were a little bit better. Avery, for one, was really cool. Thing is, he didn't have too much more character than the baseline that we had set for him as a side character. There wasn't too much developed. And I feel like there was an arc, but it was kind of a basic arc. Though it was like, it was, it was an interesting, strong arc. Not basic, I mean. Interesting and strong, but it's very small. He's not too deep. He's okay. He has a great moment at the end. Throughout the end and middle, he's he has just constant great moments. But the thing is, overall, his arc and him as a character doesn't do that much for me. The other characters that are good, I would say Kalisha or something like that. Uh, I don't remember her name. It's a K, and you know who she is. Uh, and Nikki was really fun. And the bully guy, who I forget as well, Henry, maybe? Harry? Something like that. And the others didn't really do anything for me. But these guys were really interesting. I really like Kalisha. She was... She's a very good character. I think she was had a had enough development to justify her being in a Stephen King book because it's Stephen King. The other guys, they were good. They were good. They were really good. That's that's what I'll give it to you. Except for the characters I didn't mention, who were shown up a lot. They didn't really have a massive role, but they did show up quite a bit. And I feel like those could have been a little bit better. Now the whole plot. It is very original in my opinion. Obviously, it is a political statement. Uh, after he edited it, he, he noticed it and he kind of stuck it in there. It was a political statement. And since I'm, I'm not of the side of Stephen King, and so if you want to trust anybody on how political this book is, you can trust me. It's not that political. It is a metaphor for something that's going on in, the, in America today or a year ago. I don't remember if it stopped or not. Uh, but it isn't, but it's a reasonable thing. It's saying this is bad. It's like, yeah, well, of course that's bad. We agree with that and that's fair. But then the question that rises from that theme is, is it okay under certain situations? And it's a very applicable theme to the political climate. And I think even no matter which side you're on, you can agree. That's a good question. That's an interesting question. You might disagree on where you draw the line, whether you should go towards the truth or whether you're okay. You know, we don't need the truth on that. It's fine. We're cool with it. It doesn't need to exist. Uh, you know, stuff like that. It's a very strong theme that could be political, but it's not It's not really questionably bad or questionably divisive. It, he doesn't make a strong statement on it. Well, he does, but it's not a very strong, strong statement. It's kind of like, yeah, well, that's kind of bad, and we're all cool with that. Also, for anyone that is actually, you know, against King on the political climate, I, I started this book, and there was an immediate comment about the current president, and so I thought, hmm, maybe tone that down a little bit right at the start. You know, you don't want to get off on a bad foot. There's people from both sides reading your books. But then I kind of went along and there was one reference to him that was bad, but it wasn't really that bad. And then there was another reference to him that wasn't bad or good, it was kind of neutral. And then there was another that was kind of bad and then another that was kind of bad. But all of these, they weren't like big paragraphs. You know, there was one sentence for each of those. And then there was also maybe one or two sentences for the person that lost the US 2016 election, and that was good. Uh, but, or not really good, but again, neutral to good. And so, it, it doesn't matter to me. I I, was, I got off on the bad, bad foot, but 
I don't, it's okay for me because it's not big and it's not making massive political statements saying, hey, you're a dummy. No, it's just kind of people's thoughts. And so if, if, I, if that were you, then I wouldn't worry about it. I really loved the stuff that went on uh, in the Institute. So stuff, stuff went down in the Institute. I'm not gonna reveal what it was, but it was really fun. And I mean that by, it was really compelling. It was really smart and original. It was very, very interesting in a way that I've never seen before. So I, I do really wanna praise it on that. But the thing about it is that as they as they get there and they stay in the institute, yeah, they stay in the institute and it kind of gets more and more boring. It, it stays relatively even overall, but as soon as something goes down, a big, big event goes down with Luke and we do get to a point where it gets kind of boring. Of course, that segment with Luke, where that it's the big turning point of the novel, I believe it's roughly halfway through, maybe two thirds of the way through, that was extremely exciting. Uh, equally on par with the original moments with Luke, except this time there's actually action going down and it's super fun. I, I really enjoyed that fully. But immediately after, it, Stephen King's like, oh well, I guess there's really nothing to do. We're just gonna stay with them for a little bit, have the tension stay high and just do, and just have them feel emotions and think, but, it didn't work. It was way too long, that part. Uh, that could have just been cut, 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 cut down. Because it was really hard for me to stay really interested in it when they were doing basically nothing. We were just hearing characters talk and hearing characters be worried instead of characters do something about that worry. Of course, that hype stayed with me for a long time. I, I stayed with it and it I kind of pushed me through most of that part. But I still feel that it was really, really lagging because as much as it's a very interesting thing that happened before that really boring time, it's a very boring time. Not much really happens. But as soon as something happens to end that boring time, it continues to be fairly boring. And this is where I have my real problem with the book. Roughly two thirds of the way in to roughly maybe a hundred pages from the end, which would be a maybe a hundred page or maybe a hundred fifty page or two hundred pages, something like that segment. That was what I, I really didn't like that part because very little happens that we could say is, you know, this is concrete. This is interesting. This is new. This is original. And it's just, People talking, people in the same room talking, people talking about certain things that we know about already, certain things that are like, okay, well, that's kind of an interesting topic, but it's it's not really big enough to warrant its own chapter with absolutely nothing else going on. And that's what I really felt was at fault with the novel. That specific segment is the big no-no that I say for it. Because even though, you know, that part's boring, we rise up to a fairly good climax. People call it a really great climax. I thought it was so-so, it was, it was good. It was a good climax. And it was a very interesting action sequence. It was a very original action sequence. But during that point, there was a very specific thing that was going on that was a big twist, in my opinion. Uh, and that twist, which was connected to their powers in the Institute, was very, it felt like it was pulled out of thin air. But the thing is, while that happens, you don't really care. Uh, I cared because I was reading it very slowly and I saw that, you know, this feels very out of place. This feels like you just pulled it out of nowhere and I want to know like why you didn't foreshadow this because it feels like you didn't foreshadow it. Maybe if I read it again, I would notice, but it feels like you didn't foreshadow this and you go along and you realize, oh, it is a very smart idea that really, it really is implemented well in the explanation of why that exists and how this affects the world around it. But as an explanation in itself, or as the original incident, it feels completely out of place. Like it wasn't thought about at all and it was just stuck in there because Stephen King didn't know how to end his novel. But his explanation was really well crafted and so I'm happy that worked out. And I feel like it's a little unfortunate that that wasn't made more clear at the start of when that twist appeared because that would have made things much easier to digest for me. At the same time, I wasn't a big fan of Annie who people call is one of the best characters. I feel like she really didn't offer much. First of all, she offered next to nothing to the plot. Her character itself was an interesting character, not good enough to be anything other than interesting. And she had a cheesy one-liner at the end, which some people didn't appreciate, but I really appreciated it. I thought it was really fun. It was, uh, no, it was beginning of the climax, so it wasn't really at the end, but it was very, very cheesy. And I, I saw a lot of people on Goodreads complaining about it, but I liked it. I thought it was really interesting. So the climax itself, like I said, was awesome. The build up to the climax was fairly, fairly boring in my opinion. And there was a bunch of action that went down and I thought that all that action was very good. If Hard, if hard to realize, you know, imagine. Other than that, it was really fun. And then we ended with the type of epilogue. And we get into the big reveal, the big explanation of why all of this is going down. And, you know, something we wonder the whole time. And I really like how King positioned this right at the end. When everything is over, we finally get this great explanation. The, the big question of what we've been wondering all this time. Which I, I kind of felt like I was missing something throughout most of the book. But no, no, it, it's all explained at the end. And 
it raises a really smart question, like I mentioned before, a question that is applicable to today, something that is really hard to answer no matter which side of the political spectrum you're on. It is extremely difficult to answer because if you answer one way, you feel like a bad person. If you answer the other way, you are basically saying, yeah, I don't care about anything. Everything can die, essentially. So it's a really hard question to answer. And it was really raised very well, but I don't like the way King answered it. He answered it in a way that he made it clear that it wasn't a very hard answer. It was a very soft, you know, maybe this isn't true, but maybe it is. Who knows? This is the best answer I can give you. And I feel like it was very too mathematical, in my opinion. Uh, not mathematical in the sense of it was too hard to understand, but it felt like he was just kind of pulling something out of math and saying, ah, boom, you're wrong. But and I, I didn't like that because it made sense. The math made sense, but it wasn't as applicable to the situation as it might have been if they were sure that they were correct. And so I, I understand I'm getting hard to understand, but I do want to stress this. The explanation for what is going on is a good one to a certain extent, and then it kind of just feels like you're just kind of trying to provide an explanation and not a very good one. You say, hey, here's an explanation. That's all I got for you. Sorry, uh, you better leave. And I really didn't like that part. By that part, I mean when they answered the question, which is like they literally said, hey, you, uh, you're asking the question, but I answered the question. I answered to a decent degree. Now you better leave because I don't want to rebuttal. And that's what it felt like to me. It felt like Stephen King didn't want to continue arguing. And it felt very much like you're just, you're just shutting him down because you don't want to argue. It's not because he was a bad person, because he's been a bad person this entire time. But then you don't want to argue with him because you, you just don't want to, you, I don't know why. It, it feels really weird to me. Like I, I don't like that demeanor of the characters at that point. So that is essentially the end. I did like how it ended. It was a very interesting ending. Uh, not great, but pretty good. And one more thing that I did want to mention is about Luke, who was, uh, who was a smart character. He was a smarty pants, but the thing about him is that that is his only characteristic. And you know that, I mentioned that. To me anyway, I, I felt like there were, of course there were smaller other ones, but none that were actually big enough to, for me to care about them. Um, but he had this one characteristic, which is his smartness thing about that is it was really well done at the beginning like we very much knew how smart he was right at the start and then later on he kind of faded off we were like okay well he's smart he's just not talking about it now and then eventually he gets to a point where he he's not even exemplifying that and so there's no reason for us to believe he's smart because if he's smart if he's a smart person i would assume he would be smart all the time or at least majority of the time but there's massive chunks of the book where he's just he's not that he's dumb but he doesn't show that he's smart, which is his character, that is his characteristic. He shows that he's smart. And there's so certain situations where it's like, this would be a perfect time for him to show that he is smart, and yet he doesn't. Him, being a 12 year old that is like the smartest person, apparently, that we should have ever met in our lives, is literally reduced to a guy who beats people at chess, and that's all he does. And along with that, there's the argument that people don't really talk the way that people talk in the novel, essentially the kids, because, you know, as, as well as, as much as they were good, fairly well-written kids, they did not talk like their kids. And listen, I know some people, they're talking like, oh yeah, smart kids talk like that. No, no, I know smart kids, okay? I, I know people that are really, really, like, they're crazy smart, they're, they're so smart. And no one talks like that. And I know this because I am a kid. I know what it is like to be, not, not what it's like to be smart, but it's what it's like to talk naturally as a person. Because as an adult, you might do that. But very few people as an adult do that. You know, but as a kid, no, you mimic the people that are around you. And so because of that, there's obviously gonna be mimicking of, the, of children talk. And that was almost non-existent. They didn't talk at all like children. And even the dumb ones didn't talk like children. Smart ones, you could say there's an argument they don't talk like children because they're not very, they're not dumb children like most children are. But no, because even smart children don't talk like that regularly. They talk about that in certain times when it's relevant for them to talk like that. But generally, they talk like a normal kid, except with added words. And this, Stephen King, I've never seen him write a kid character talk decently. I've never heard that from him. And so I'm just gonna pin it on that. And then there are the references to Dark Tower. So there aren't that many. I counted two in total that are direct, and then there's one that's kind of indirect. Uh, one of them is being Jerusalem's Lot. They mentioned that town in page 364. And then they talked about some someone being on the beam, uh, which is 368, page 368. So those are the two main references that are, you know, physically written in. But then there's also the uh, reference of, you know, towers in general, which connects to Carrie and a bunch of other stories. So there's a couple things here and there, but not that much. But whoa, man, I'm sorry. That's that's a really long video. I, I, <laughs> I apologize. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, you do understand my position on this. I think it's a, it's a 
totally fine Stephen King book, totally average for him, which is a good book for most people. And I, I don't want to rate this too high. I considered a five star at the beginning, but then I thought, you know, listen, the plot is, is relatively decent, but it's not anything great. It's not anything extraordinary. So I considered four stars. Four stars wasn't that good when I popped it into halfway and considering the characters, which were not at all accurate, no, no, listen, I'm not gonna give you a four star for that. And I really wanna give him a 3.5 because I feel like a three is a little, it's just a tiny bit low, but I, I can't I, I can't do that. I've got a system where I round, so I have to go with three stars. Even though I feel like it's just a little bit low, it's not a three star, it might be a 3.5, but you get the idea, three stars right there. Uh, if, if you have not read this book and you feel like you wanna keep up with Stephen King, totally cool. This is actually like a good book. It's not, you won't regret reading this. But at the same time, if you're only reading St Stephen King for, a good, you know, brand new book, like it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be Stephen King, I would go skip this one. Outsider was great, Outsider was really fun, stuff like Revival, that's great. Pick up some other books. The, this is not the t the one that you want, uh, but it's not, it's totally fine. It's not a great book, but it's a, it's a fairly good one. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click, click a like button down below and subscribe if you want to see more Stephen King stuff because I review Stephen King books like right after they're published. Not really, maybe like two, one to two weeks after they're published. So very, very soon. And you can hear my thoughts on it if you like this review, if you want to see another review like that. I also am trying to read a bunch of Stephen King books. You can check out my channel for more Stephen King reviews. I also read a lot of fantasy. So you can see that if you'd like to. So please subscribe if you're interested in any of that. Leave a comment if you want to tell me your thoughts on the book or anything else. That's pretty much all I got for you guys today. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.